On the surface, observables appear to be more powerful and complex versions of promises. Both promises and observables can deal with returning the result of some asynchronous operation. Typically, if someone were to ask what the difference between promises and observables are, they might get a response like, promises return a single value and then they are done. Observables can return multiple values over time, not just a single value. Along with this description, we might also have the typical example of a promise suiting something like an HTTP request. We execute some request, that request provides a response, and we are done. One value delivered asynchronously. The typical example of a task suited to an observable is something like a WebSocket connection, where we aren't just interested in fetching some data once, we want to listen over time for multiple values. This tends to lead to the view that if you just need to execute an HTTP request or generally just return one value, then observables are just an overcomplication. But I think this misses a key idea. Proponents of observables might push against this perception and boast of RxJS's ability to cancel HTTP requests in flight. To which proponents of promises might say, actually, we have a board controller now, so you can do that with promises too. To which proponents of observables might push back with various operators that can be used to easily handle more precise cancellation behavior, among other things. But I think this still misses the key idea. Let's take the example of the single HTTP request returning a single response, since it's probably the most common scenario. Why would we ever benefit from an observable here? Well, observables are great with dealing with values over time, or temporal values if you want to be fancy. Even though it looks like this HTTP request is just a one and done kind of thing, often it isn't. Often we need to execute the same request multiple times over the lifespan of the application. Let's say we have an HTTP request to load the post for our homepage. We just need to load a single response and then we are done. A perfect use case for promises, right? That is until the user tries to load the second page of data. Now we actually need to run that request again, just with some different parameters this time. We aren't working with a WebSocket here, but in a way, we are still working with an API that is returning multiple responses over time. We don't have multiple values being returned from a single request or connection, we have multiple values being delivered over multiple requests. We can do this easily enough with promises, we just execute multiple promises and set the result. But observables allow us to do this declaratively. Rather than having imperative code that updates a variable, observables allow us to define the complete behavior of this data at the time of its declaration. We can look in just this one place and understand how it changes over time. Now we've touched on where the key misconception lies. Observables are good at dealing with multiple values over time, and whilst this simple HTTP request might look like it is just dealing with a single value, if we consider the lifetime of this data in the application, it is actually derived from multiple values over time. Rather than being delivered over something like a WebSocket connection, values are just being delivered over time through multiple separate HTTP requests. But so what? Maybe you don't care about writing things declaratively. If you don't care about declarative code, then observables aren't really giving you anything here. But we are still in the realm of temporal values, the values changing over time that observables are good at dealing with. So as we add complexity, observables have the tools available to handle just about anything, whereas promises are really at the limits of their capabilities. Even just simple cancellation behavior is, at least in my opinion, more awkward to achieve with promises when compared to observables. But if requirements become more complex, the benefits of observables become more apparent, and achieving similar behavior with promises becomes a lot harder and is going to require a lot of imperative code. If you have values that change in your application after they are initially set, and you want your code to be declarative, this is what observables will allow you to achieve. Having values that change in your application is a common and mundane situation, not something highly complex and esoteric which RxJS and observables are often pigeonholed for. As we have seen, data for the current page is something that changes over time, but so do things like search terms, filters, the currently logged in user, really any state in your application is made from values that change over time. This is why observables are useful in simple situations, but then if you have more complex situations that require doing things like coordinating the execution, responses, and cancellation of multiple HTTP requests, then just about anything you could possibly need is built into RxJS and it can achieve highly complex behaviors, often with just a couple of built-in operators. I don't think everyone should always be using observables, but I do think they are far more useful than people often realize. 
So let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you thought this video was worth your time, a like or subscribe before you go would be much appreciated and I hope to see you in the next one.